on our last screencast, we were looking at constructivism and, and talking about constructive sculpture. <clears throat> we'll continue that briefly, but we'll begin to look at the graphic arts as well. Um, Alexander Rodchenko was another constructivist sculptor. He had studied under Malevich and Tatlin, and uh, just like now Gabo and Gabo's brother Pevner, um, he's making sculpture that is equally about the space uh, implied by the solids as it is about the solids itself. It has a border, it has a boundary, but that boundary is only implied uh, by the semi-solid forms. In this case, what Rodchenko has done is he's taken a single sheet of plywood and cut it and then rotated the different cuts in space painting them different colors, uh, metallic colors, no less, aluminum paint, bronze paint, rotating these in space. So again, it's this interest in industry that we've seen in a lot of modernism, but it's also this idea of implying space rather than actually creating uh, a solid. This idea of transforming wood into something that looks uh, industrial is picked up in the Rodchenko painting that we have at the National Gallery, where he has uh, machine-like forms. Uh, again, uh, references back, I think, to Futurism, um, to Purism as well. Uh, but these are all painted on a sanded piece of board that has not been treated. Uh, but rather where he shows us the wood grain uh, directly through this with these uh, uh, machine-like elements that seem to be painted on it. Again, nature transformed by industry, nature transformed by the artist, uh, the impact of industry on tradition. These are all key themes for the constructivists in modern uh, Russia, especially after the 1917 revolution. Now, Rod is probably best remembered as a photographer and as a graphic designer. In fact, in 1921, he abandoned painting altogether as well as a sculpture. And he said that when he picked up the camera and started taking pictures, he was able, and these are his words, he was able to leave Rubens behind. Rubens, you might remember, is the great Baroque painter, and what Rodchenko meant by this was that the sort of composition and viewpoints that he could get from using the camera broke with the standards uh, that had been so traditional in Western painting and allowed him to do things he had never thought of doing uh, when he was standing with brush in hand. And you'll notice here, a pioneer is a, a young uh, Soviet uh, uh, Youth um, blowing the bugle to rally the cry, but the uh, the view he takes and the strength of the diagonals and the form that the trumpet becomes uh, could easily remind you very much of some of the forms we have here, which also have strong diagonals, uh, strong circular forms, which again uh, evoke industry. Well, here we have the brass of the bugle, the circle of the head, uh, these strong diagonals that make the visible into something that's kind of abstract in its way. Um, and that's what he means, I think, when he says he wants to leave Rubens behind. Many of Rodchenko's terrific photographs take these uh, incredible viewpoints that end up turning the physical world around us into something much more abstract and part of a general composition uh, where he blocks off a certain part of the top where the ladder itself becomes uh, uh, more of, a, of an abstract, triangular shape, even the human figure inhabiting it ends up taking on a certain abstract quality, and it's all because of uh, his innovative use of, of the camera, uh, allowing him to, to take up compositions, uh, we can truly call constructivist compositions that seem very similar to the kinds of compositions that uh, Gabo is making uh, Pevner's making or, or Tatlin for that matter. There are quite a few wonderful Rodchenko photos around the D.C. area, both of these from the Library of Congress. 
And you can see in all of these, he's focused on these on these industrial uh, uh, structures. Uh, this uh, this tower, for example, where the lattice work of iron bars, uh, the potential of industry to create brand new kinds of structures, is something that fascinates him. And perhaps even with that, our place, we as humans, um, within all of that, almost as if we're caught up in that mesh, in that web, whether it's the guard on your left or uh, the young man on the on the fire escape on your right. Uh, all of these give us also these metaphors of ascension, uh, moving upward, uh, which again are very important for this hopeful utopian cycle of, of Soviet art uh, after the revolution, where they feel quite strongly that industry used properly is going to elevate Russia away from its uh, somewhat backward path compared with the rest of Western Europe and into a shiny new future. Uh, Rodchenko also used his own photos for uh, graphic design, book covers, posters, and so forth. Um, he was one of the very first artists to begin developing the art of photo montage, a sort of photographic method of collage where you take photos you collage them together, and then you photograph the collage and present that. Uh, he's one of the greatest at this, and in this case, um, what he's illustrating here is a book of love poems by Vladimir Mayakovsky. There's his name in uh, in um, in Russian Cyrillic script. Proeto means about this. And there are a series of love poems from Mayakovsky to a woman named Lily Burke, uh, from whom he was estranged at the time. And uh, inside, more photo montages from Rodchenko to illustrate uh, the different love poems. And they include images of Mayakovsky himself, along with numerous other elements. Most of these are simply words from the poems that are picked up and given um, illustration without uh, an attempt to tie them together into a particular narrative. It's uh, evocations of thoughts and emotions and concepts that come up out of the poem. Here is Lily Burke herself, who also appears staring at us on the cover. And again, he's just picked up certain words out of the poems and, and illustrated those words independent from any kind of syntax. Really uh, groundbreaking compositions and a wonderful use of collage. And again, a constructivist interest in, in uh, geometric forms, strong diagonals uh, throughout all of the works. Rodchenko stands at the very beginning of a, very, of a really fascinating phase of uh, Russian uh, poster art, uh, graphic design. Um, many artists uh, in the early part of the 1920s are experimenting with photo montage, and obviously the debt to cubism is, is really clear in this. Uh, you know, the cubist collage different elements together. Why not bring photographs into that along with architectural drawings, uh, and then photograph those for prints. Again, Kutsis himself, uh, Gustav Kutsis was perhaps the greatest of the Soviet poster makers, although a great fan of Rodchenko. Uh, but in this case, he shows Lenin, Vladimir Lenin, uh, carrying industrial things and bringing them into place, about to set them up, uh, the people welcoming him and cheering him on as he's attempting to electrify the entire country. In other words, bring electricity to the country. This is an important element, an important background to these Russian works, in that um, electricity itself hadn't really come to many parts of Russia by this time. And the industrial benefits that most, most of Western Europe was celebrating, things that the futurists were bringing into their pictures, didn't even exist in Russia yet. It's part of why they loved the futurists. Yet, yet, of introducing these benefits uh, for everyone. Well, here uh, our poster is exactly about that, Lenin bringing electricity to the country. But also fits in with what Rodchenko was working on, which is this interest in 